Hello everyone and welcome. In this lesson, we will learn about inverse kinematics. Alright, so before we understand what inverse kinematics or IK is, we first need to understand forward kinematics or FK. FK is simple as taking an object then rotating it, an object that is part of a hierarchy. So in this case, if we select the forearm bone and as we start to rotate this notice this is what forward kinematics is as simple as that <laughs> okay so forward kinematics is just rotating an object that is part of a hierarchy and the children or the child object will follow along with the movement of their parent. So this is the forward kinematics. Inverse kinematics, on the other hand, is going to inverse the rotation of our bone object based on the location of an inverse kinematics goal. So to show you how inverse kinematics work, let's say we go ahead and create this inverse kinematics goal. So you can understand exactly what it is and what it does. Before we create this, and in order to have an easier time making this inverse kinematics system, let's say we go ahead and use the layer explorer feature inside 3ds Max. So we can store our model in a new layer and hide that layer. So the way we do this is by first selecting the layer explorer, this icon over here, manage layers. And once we click on it, we'll get this new dialog box. So this is the layer explorer. And to add a new layer, we would want to click on this button over here, create a new layer, okay? Now, with this new layer added, we want to select all of our objects in our scene except the bone object. Okay, let's select first our, all of our objects in our scene. Okay, we will then deselect our bone object by holding the Alt key while clicking to select, to deselect, sorry, the bone objects and once we do this and select all of our crocodile objects and with our new layer selected we would want to click on this button add selected objects to highlighted layer now all of our selected objects have been added successfully to this new layer as you can see over here Feel free, if you want to, to go ahead and rename this new layer to stay organized. So, let's have it renamed to model underscore layer. And now, by having this new layer that contains our 3D model, we can simply go ahead and hide or show our model, freeze, or unfreeze if we would want the model to be unselectable, okay? If we freeze our model, we'll not be able to select it. You can do all of these things all from just one location, which is great and super helpful in many cases. Now, it's a good idea to check this default layer because as we hide this model layer, for instance, if the model layer is checked like this, and if we were to create new objects, they are going to be added to this model layer, which is already hidden, and hence our new object will be hidden as well. So we wanna make sure to check that default layer first, and that's gonna be the active layer, so every new object will be added to the default layer which is by default is visible and 
it is not frozen. All right, so let's bring back our model layer by showing it, okay? And with that said, let's go ahead and to focus more on working with just our bone objects, we'll go ahead and hide the model by clicking on this section over here. This model layer over here, I have gone ahead in a previous lesson and created it just to organize my work, okay? So now it is empty and not needed. We can go ahead and click on the delete highlighted empty layers and there we go. <laughs> so now with our model layer hidden, we can go ahead and create our inverse kinematics handle. First, we want to select, let's close this window out, and we want to select first the upper arm bone, which is the parent in this hierarchy. We would want then to head over to the animation menu, and from the IK solvers submenu, we would want to use the HI solver, which stands for History Independent Solver. All right, from here, we need to pick the wrist bone. And take a look. <laughs> we now should be able to see a line. We should also see this new cross shape in the scene and this is actually our IK go. It's basically a way of manipulating the chain that is tied to the inverse kinematics. Okay? If we select the IK go, here's the Role of our IK Go to manipulate the chain that is tied to this inverse kinematics system. All right, and so now with our IK Go selected and using the Move tool, the W key on your keyboard, notice this: we can start moving the IK Go around, and here we can see exactly what inverse kinematics does. So again, we are inversing the rotation of our bone object in the opposite direction, as you can see right over here. How cool is that? Now, what will this be useful for? Well, this would be great to use for arm animation. For instance, a character dialogue or the character needs to rest its arm or hand on a surface, but we still need to animate the upper body. We can use inverse kinematics to get this done very easily. All right, great. We now have managed to create an inverse kinematics system. How cool is that? <laughs> Now, what's really cool about this is if we were to head over to the Motion tab, the fourth icon in the Command Panel, this is where we can access the parameters for our IK system. For instance, underneath the IK Solver Properties Rollout, we have what's called the swivel angle property, which is used to animate the elbow. Let me show you this clearly. If I select the IK goal and move it inward, just like this, if we now use the swivel angle, we will be able to animate the elbow. Okay? And to see this clearly, I will go ahead in the layer explorer and bring back our model layer by clicking on the lamp icon. Okay, and so now if I were to go ahead and use the swivel angle again, as you can see, we are now able to animate the elbow. All right, 
This is super cool. How exciting is that? Let's right click in the swivel angle property to zero it out. All right. And so this is going to be it for this lesson. We have learned about inverse kinematics. What is the inverse kinematics? Again, it is just rotating our bones reversed based on the position of an IK goal. As you can see, again, it is great for arm animation, even for legs. We've also seen the benefits of working with inverse kinematics. And so that's pretty much it for this lesson. We will go ahead and discuss control objects.